Today, we're going to talk about arpeggios, but don't let the fancy Italian name fool you. An arpeggio is simply a way of playing chords by cycling through the notes of the chord. In the world of synthesizer hardware and Reason's virtual rack, devices known as arpeggiators do exactly what their name suggests, convert chords into arpeggios. Dual Arpeggio is Reason's newest and most advanced arpeggiator, but there's even more to it than that, so let's dive in. Arpeggiators need chords to work. So to get started, I'll grab our tried and true ID8 grand piano and lay down a sustained chord progression. Let's replace our piano with this preset, Triangle Pluck. If we drag dual arpeggio above our combinator, you can hear the default patch already has much more life than our piano chords ever did. But let's right click and reset dual arpeggio to explore the basics. This is dual arpeggio in its simplest configuration. As we sustain a chord, the notes are split up and arpeggiated based on the settings we determine on the front panel. Many of the controls are fairly self-explanatory and intuitive when you experience them yourself. You set the speed, how many octaves the arpeggio spans, whether a single note or double note is triggering, and the direction of the arpeggio. So far, these are standard settings found on nearly every arpeggiator you'll ever come across. In fact, right now our dual arpeggio isn't even a dual arpeggio at all. It's more of a solo arpeggio, because ARP2 is deactivated. When we activate ARP2, we can set up a parallel and completely independent arpeggiator to play along with ARP1. If we set up ARP2 to run half as fast, only span one octave, repeat each note, and move up and down the chord, you can hear things got a lot more busy than the single monophonic arpeggio of ARP1. In fact, if I jump over to the right side and transpose the notes of ARP2 down one octave, you'll be able to hear the distinction between the two arpeggiators clearly. So far, all of this has been happening in a fairly simple and autonomous way. But what if you don't want a simple arpeggio, or even dual simple arpeggios? What if you want more manual control over the inner workings of the arpeggio? This is where dual arpeggio comes into its own. Let's start with the steps switch. Most common musical rhythms and passages happen on even divisions of the beat, twos and fours. Yet the most common type of chord, a triad, has an odd number of notes. If the basic arpeggiator automatically cycles those three notes, we end up with a mismatched relationship between our song's beat and the arpeggio itself, where it lands first on and then off the beat. That can be super cool, or it can be super annoying if what you really want is straight-ahead consistency. By activating the steps switch, we can lock in the number of steps in our arpeggio, regardless of how many notes there are in our chord. Let's specify four steps, but play a three-note triad. You can hear that dual arpeggio is looping the pattern every four steps, adding an extra note as necessary. If we change to five steps, that same three-note chord is arpeggiated as necessary to loop every five steps. On its own, this is a nice level of control to have over our arpeggio. But this is dual arpeggio after all. We can set one step length for ARP1 and a different step length for ARP2, resulting in a combined note pattern that cycles asynchronously, forming what musicians refer to as polyrhythms. Just like we can activate a switch to enable custom step lengths, so too can we activate the velocity switch to gain further control over our sound. If we switch to a different pluck preset that is velocity sensitive, like the future Knox, you'll see what I mean. Let's also load one of Dual Arpeggio's presets as well, because as useful as it is to understand all these settings one by one, Dual Arpeggio comes with many presets to get you started, and they can even be a great way to learn by exploring. Starpeggio has all the now familiar settings we've covered so far. Both ARP1 and 2 are active, and they've got speed, direction, octave range settings, and even custom step lengths. But in addition to all that, ARP1 and ARP2 also have their velocity switches activated, and several blue illuminated bars under each step. These bars are velocity controls, 
we can specify a velocity setting for each step. And since our preset is programmed to respond to velocity, when a low or high velocity step occurs, you'll hear the filter and volume of our sound change. Let's listen to just ARP1. And when we bring in ARP2, you can hear that we're able to craft accented patterns with a level of refinement beyond just the simple polyrhythm experimentation we've done this far. That brings us to the last and final switch in this section, the pattern switch. The pattern switch overrides the simple direction setting we've been using so far. Instead of telling our arpeggiator to just go up a chord or down a chord, enabling pattern mode lets us create custom and even polyphonic patterns for our chords to follow. It's a little like a step sequencer. Actually, it's a lot like a step sequencer, but even cooler. Let me show you. When I hold down a chord, the arpeggiators start running, and you can see four horizontal note lanes with the pitches of the D minor triad I'm playing. We've got horizontal rows for our pitch and vertical columns for each step, meaning I can activate any of these cells to program the exact note and rhythm I want. Depending on where I click in the cell, I get one of three different note lengths, allowing me to decide on a note-by-note -note basis how plonky our sound gets or tie together sustained notes. And because dual arpeggio is polyphonic, my patterns aren't limited to one note per step. I can create harmonic patterns too. Unlike a traditional step sequencer, we aren't programming specific notes, so much as a blueprint for how to arpeggiate any chord we run through dual arpeggio. When we change chords, the same pattern now plays using the pitches of the new chord. It's the culmination of all these settings that make dual arpeggio a rhythmic and harmonic playground. It can fill out empty mixes, spice up otherwise boring sounds, or spark entirely new songs. Let's throw a quick idea together using some of what we've learned. We'll start with sine pluck. Bring in a dual arpeggio above it, which we'll reset. We can leave most of the default settings, but I'll change direction to down and switch on repeat for doubled notes. I'll record a simple triad progression, but I'll periodically add a fourth note to my chord while I play. Our automatic arpeggiator will adapt to our note input and give our pattern a cool little skip in the rhythm. As cool as arpeggiators sound on one track, combining two different tracks, both running dual arpeggio, is even better. I'm going to have both tracks playing the same exact chord so I can right-click my sine pluck sequencer track and choose duplicate tracks and devices. Most of what we need for our second track is already in place now. I'll pan each mix channel left and right to widen them in my stereo mix, and now we just need to swap the combinator preset and the dual arpeggio settings. For the patch, let's go to one we've seen in another tutorial, Hipster Square. And for dual arpeggio, let's browse one of the presets to see what complements our first track. That's pretty close to perfect. In fact, there's nothing stopping me from customizing a preset pattern once I'm close, like leaving some space on the end of the phrase by deactivating these cells here. I can even offset one or both of these patterns using the shift step parameter. If I move them both two steps, the pattern will shift from accenting the downbeats to the upbeats. Let me turn on the click so you can feel where it sits. Here it is on the beat, and now off the beat. This is all well and good, but things right now sound more like a BBC science documentary than a song. One way to add a human element to our phrases is with customized variation. I don't have to run dual arpeggio live. I can click the send to track button above our players to render the MIDI notes to my sequencer, where I can then go in and modify notes to vary the pattern. But still, we need some recognizable music fast, and to get it, I want to show you one of my favorite little tricks for the non-keyboard players out there. So, guitarists, drummers, theremin virtuosos, I'm talking to you guys now. We've already seen in a previous tutorial how scales and chords makes playing chords something anyone can do. Simply put, scales and chords will generate the notes of your chord from a single note input. But it won't do anything particularly interesting with that chord once it's done. 
Enter dual arpeggio to the rescue. For our piano, I'll use Radical Piano, a rack extension available in the propeller head shop. I'll drag a scales and chords above it and set the key to D minor. Now, before I do this next step, let's all get on the same page. Have you ever seen piano players do that thing where they rock back and forth across a chord, playing the third and fifth on the downbeat and the root on the upbeat? Of course you have, because it's in roughly 38 septillion songs. I'm talking about this playing style. Now that we all know what I mean, I want to emulate that piano style. Let's drag a dual arpeggio below scales and chords and reset it. It's an eighth note phrase, which has just two steps to it, an upbeat and a downbeat. That means I can activate my steps switch and set it to two steps. While I hold down a single note on my keyboard, I can see and activate step one for the upper notes of my player generated triad. I'll activate the root note on step two, the upbeat. Just one more issue. Piano players have two hands. Thankfully, we have two arpeggiators to match, and we can emulate the common left-hand technique of long sustained bass notes. I'll activate ARP2, flip the pattern switch, and draw in one long tied note on the bottom row, which represents the root note position. Also, importantly, I'll transpose ARP2 down one octave to move it into the typical left-hand range. Add a little reverb, and things are starting to take shape. From here, you're free to go on building your track with more parts. For me, these arpeggiators inspired a guitar part to blend the computer-generated pattern feel with organic textures. One other production tip I'll give you. When you're building up songs around a lot of rhythmic arpeggiators, it's often nice to counterbalance all those quick, sharp notes with some slower elements, like I did with this bass guitar. or even these Neptune vocal synth harmonies, which themselves are being generated using a player. We could spend a whole day exploring a million other possibilities with dual arpeggio, but that's what I'm hoping you'll now do on your own. We've only scratched the surface. It's time for you to go deep. Good luck.